I'll be having very interesting guests who have personal stories to tell to the world. Welcome to MNB World Talk Show. Hello there, welcome to MNB World Talk Show. My name is Bilrute Tumundemru, you guys call me Beck. And today in the studio, I have a very unique guest who is an overseas professional basketball player who is playing for a Mongolian team named Tinum Ulti LLC. Well, we have a Mr. Brandon Morris in the studio. Well, thank you, Brandon Morris, Mr. Brandon Morris, for You're coming welcome. to our studio. Let's start talking about your childhood in Alexandria, Louisiana. Yeah, I'm from Alexandria, uh -huh. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Born and raised, grew up there with a few friends of mine, you know. Mm -hmm. But overall, I mean, it was a great experience playing in the parks, having fun with the friends. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me, tell our audience about the that town, Alexandria. I mean, it's What's so special al about Alexandria? I mean, there's nothing much really special about it. I mean, f being from there, it's going to always be special. Having your family and friends there mm -hmm. would always make it special. But as far as anything else going on, it's not too much you want to do out there. Oh, yeah? Right. All right. So how about your family? Family, I live yeah. with my how mother. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one brother, older brother, and I have two sisters. One of my older sisters, and I have a baby sister. So you're the second from the second, yeah. second youngest. Right, right. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Are they still in the United States? They are all in Louisiana. I have a brother who lives in Washington now, but mm -hmm. mainly back and forth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh huh. What's your mother do? My mother, she works at a Louisiana Special Education Center. Mm, special Education right, Center. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you miss mom? No. Always. <laughs> always. Always. Huh? Always. Ah, uh, yeah. Who doesn't miss True. mom? True. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you, I mean, share some good memories from your childhood. I mean, growing up. The best up memories, okay, l l let's say, when you think about, okay, when you think childhood, something comes, pops into your mind, what would that be? Um, childhood, I mean, I, I didn't have a great okay, childhood. Okay, give me three words. Give me something, man. <laughs> Basketball. Okay, ball. Friends. Friends. Gambling. Gambling. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> gambling. That's all right. <laughs> okay. What about gambling? I mean, we play, you know, shoot dice, play cards, play anything cards. to make money, some type of hustle. Oh, so you make money? Right. Gambling. Right. Or playing basketball. Right. And playing basketball, and you gamble on your on your plays. Right. Like, play against me, or play against you, mm -hmm. one on one, and we gonna bet money, and see who wins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from what age you started playing ball? I mean, I always knew how to play. Like, I played at a young age. I kept a basketball with me, dribbling or shooting around somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then growing up, I just kind of stuck with me. But going through, like, junior high, high mm -hmm. school, I wasn't able to play because of the things I was doing. But, I mean, I still... Oh, okay. You just said things I was doing. Right. What things you were doing I mean, in junior and junior high? Not going to school, not doing my work, All not right. being able to make the basketball team, but being able to play basketball. Could have made the basketball team, but uh -huh. as far as not doing my work, stayed in trouble in the office, mm -hmm. getting kicked out of class, stuff like that, kept me away from the game. So I wasn't able to play in junior high or in high school. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, most of the basketball players, professional players, they start playing from the young age, right? True, I mean, true. when you really look into that history. True. But you didn't, you were playing on the streets. Right, right. Can, I I played can we say that? Yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Right. That's where I played at in the streets and the mm -hmm. parks. Like every street, every park. If you had a basketball go, mm -hmm. and we walking down the street and you playing, we probably finna play with you. If not, we'll you know find somebody else who playing and we'll go on they go and then play. I mean, if you want to play for money or gamble, we are gonna do that with you. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So you were uh, you were kind of troublesome kid. Kind of sort of yeah. Oh, kind yeah, of so. Had, okay. I had what my kind of I had my day. You got into. I mean, you know, my high school wise, stole a few cars, you know, broke into a store, uh, oh, okay. was on house arrest for a while, probation okay. for two years, okay. you know, drug court and oh, wow. yeah, house arrest. Like, okay. A okay. lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. Yeah, a lot of trouble. How did you get out? I did. What made you get out? I mean, I had to do my little, the time I did do, was from pro probation time. Okay. Once I got off probation, I was able to get my record back clean mm -hmm. and do the things I needed to do to be on the right path because I didn't want to get back in trouble. But what made you really understand deep down? Okay, th this ain't this ain't I mean, this ain't gonna you, get me somewhere or right, right. anywhere. So well, I, mean, I might end you, up dead. You know, doing those kind of things. But I mean, what really affected you in your in your perspectives? I mean, just being in the situation you're in like once you get in trouble they lock you up and you in that room and you can't do much but sit around think look at walls you're not gonna want to do that all your life like you're not gonna want to sit in there it's boring it's nothing to do mm -hmm. so once you realize the things you was able to do on the outside you don't want to get inside so you're going to do whatever you need to do to stay outside mm -hmm. so that inside time really taught you Right, it'll, it'll, made you think. it'll wake made you, you up, think. it'll make you pay oh, attention, wake, yeah, it'll you wake up. you up and make you pay attention to the things you got mm -hmm. and you're able to do and capable of doing. Mm -hmm. and Did you read a lot hmm? Did you read? No reading, no reading, hated no. reading, hated oh, reading. You hate, hate reading. Hate, hate <laughs> reading, hate it. <laughs> All right, did you meditate there? <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. so, right? A mm, little bit, not mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so high school years, but uh, you somehow got into uh, Kansas, right, from right. Alexandria. Tell me about the story. What was the move about? Why did you go to Kansas City, and what happened there? All right. So first off, high school was I was going to play basketball for my high school team. Ended up getting in trouble. Me yeah. and one of my cousins mm -hmm. ended up, you know, going to the store, jumping the gate, running from campus. Mm -hmm. Police see us. He chases us. We mm -hmm. run from the police. Run back on campus. We didn't get caught. Mm -hmm. They seen us on camera, so the following day, we got expelled. We got in trouble, went to the principal office, they expelled us that year. Okay, you expelled so, from the right, school. Right, get expelled okay. from school. So then the following year, I go back as a freshman, try to, you know, get back on the right path, and then mm -hmm. I ended up doing some things with a few friends. We stole some cars, broke into some stores. Oh, really? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Again? Okay, okay. Yeah, we stole cars, broke into stores, and then I failed my freshman year again so my third year I was a freshman the third time mm -hmm. so I go back again try to you know get back on the right path go to school but I wasn't going to class like go to the gym spend time in the gym if I was mm -hmm. to go to class I'd do some things to get kicked out of class mm -hmm. the way I can go to the gym if I was in the gym mm -hmm. we playing basketball all day gambling having fun with friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I failed again so then by that time I wasn't able to play basketball at all Mm -hmm. So then I stopped going to school once I found out I wasn't able to play. I just stopped going, period. And just, then you just quit, I quit, quit right, school. basically okay. quit. Okay. So then, like, a few friends of mine played at one of the best high schools in Louisiana, Peabody High School, mm -hmm. one of the number one basketball schools in Louisiana, always winning championships, great school, great coach, Coach Smith, uh -huh. Coach Kidd, mm -hmm. good coaches. Mm -hmm. So they played over there. I knew them, and them, they wanted me to come play basketball with them. So they offered me the chance to come over there with them to their school mm -hmm. and play. By that time, 2010. So you met with them basically on the streets at, right, at right. the gym? They, they not they not in a professional friends. environment or in, in school or something? Right, street right. Street, okay. street friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Friends mm -hmm. from the streets, mm -hmm. yeah. The, my, my homies uh -huh. got with them. They played. They actually played in high school. So uh -huh. they was in high school doing the right thing. They offered me, you know, come over to play with us, mm -hmm. see what you can do type. So... I get over there, and at the time they had the number one player in the state, Markel Brown. He from okay. Louisiana too. Uh huh. They had him. He was playing there, and so like a few of my homies, they showed me him. You know, they like that's him right there. Like mm -hmm. when you play, mm -hmm. go at him type stuff. So I'm like, okay, cool. 
Okay. So they playing, you know, when coach is not familiar with you, they don't really play you. So you got his first team, mm -hmm. which is the starters. Then you got the second group and the mm -hmm. third group. So I'm with like the last fourth group with the guys who can't really play, but they can play. Uh -huh. So one, it's me and a few other ones, Jalen Richard. He is a uh -huh. NFL running back right now. He was on that fourth string with me. He was with that team oh, with wow. me. Uh -huh. So it was me, him, and a few other guys. And we playing, we get out there. So like me and Markel, we kind of go at it. Mm -hmm. But my team ended up beating the first team, so like the coach kicked, wow, right? Wow. The coach kicked from up. from uh, from the fourth, fourth right, fourth, fourth team fourth beat the team first team, beat the first team, right, right, right. And so coach, so it like, was a team play, huh? Right, right. Much better than team players. Huh? Got you guys, right? Uh -huh. And so like the coach kind of kicked that team out the group. I mean, kicked that team out the gym. Like, wow. All y'all get out, go home. And uh -huh. then he bring me over, like you know, uh -huh. where you from? Uh -huh. So me, I'm like now he really wants to know, get to know you. Right, right. So he asked oh, about me. What's this kid about? Huh? Right, right. So huh. I let him know, and like my high school, mm -hmm. is not too good of an athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of an athletic school, like mm -hmm. they're not really good at basketball. But we got some good players that come through there. Mm -hmm. So I tell him like my high school where I'm from, and so he bring in the first group, and he like y'all play them again. Right. So we get out there, we play again, and we win again. Uh -huh. So, like, he kick them all out. He called me, like, you go to the office type. I go over to his office. Uh -huh. He asks, do I want to come play for his school? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. Like, I do. I plan on it. Hopefully I can. But me knowing my situation, I'm not going to be able to. Uh -huh. But I'm going to tell you, yeah, because I want to play. Yeah. So, he, like, come here the next day. Uh -huh. and come, come visit me. Come see me tomorrow. Two uh -huh. o'clock. I'm uh -huh. like, okay, cool. Go home. Wake up. I don't think I even went to school the next day just to go to their school. Uh -huh. So then, like, I go up there, meet him. He got a desk full of paperwork. Like, it's all my paperwork. Wow. So it's like all my uh -huh. transcripts laid out on the desk. Uh -huh. So then he closed the door, asked me, like, Mars, mm -hmm. what the hell do you do? I'm like, what you mean? He was like, just tell me what you do. So I break it down to him. I tell him the, basically the same situation. The stealing cars, the not going to school, the gambling, yeah, yeah. and the stuff like that. Yeah. So he tell me, like, sit me down. Look at my transcripts. I have all else. Freshman year, I have all else, mm -hmm. and I got an A and P. My second year, I got all else and an A and P. Third year, all else and an A and P. So he like, you you know, you're a great basketball player. You can be playing someone. You can do something, but your grades and the things you're doing are not mm -hmm. gonna get you nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, right, you know, I agree with him. But he like, he promised me one thing. If you graduate high school. I'm gonna send you to college. So I listened to him and I agreed with it. We made a promise in that office. So he was like, he gonna send me to this optional school, which is up the street from my high school called Aiken Optional. Uh -huh. It's a, you know, it's a school that you go on your own pace type school. Okay. You go do your work. But you can get certificate from there. Right, right, you can uh -huh. get your diploma uh -huh. from there. Okay. So like, I go to that school, he enrolled me, he take care of all my paperwork, I get into that school finally. So then I go from a freshman to a senior in one year. In so, one year, right, oh, right, that's good right. Chance, huh? I get 17 credits in a year. Mm -hmm. I catch up in school, so then I was supposed to graduate in 2009, mm -hmm. but I ended up graduating a year behind in 2010. Mm -hmm. So um, that following year, mm -hmm. you know, he made that promise with me, like if I was to graduate, what he was gonna do. So I ended up graduating from Bowden High School. I got back to my original high school once I caught up, mm -hmm. graduated from Bowden, and so like around the summertime. Markel Brown, he ended up signing to Oklahoma State, mm -hmm. and then they had a few other good players who wasn't able to go to Division One because of his grades, mm -hmm. but he was able to go JUCO. So mm -hmm. the uh, coach from Peabody had a few coaches from Kansas City, Kansas come down mm -hmm. from the community college to watch Calvin Bowlecue, mm -hmm. which was one of their second best players on the team. Mm -hmm. So the coaches come down to watch him, and so he like called me up like, you know, I got some coaches coming down to watch Calvin play. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure if they see you play, they'll probably uh -huh. offer you too. So like, just come up and see what you can do. So uh -huh. I'm like, okay, cool. The time come, I get there, go to the gym with him. He put me with the first group. So like, it's a great group of basketball players. So like me uh -huh. playing point guard, passing, scoring, doing what I'm doing, you know, wow. just having fun. Uh -huh. We ended up winning, you know, just having fun playing. Once we get done, the, uh, the coaches pull me over like they want to offer you a scholarship. So I'm like, really? He like, At yeah. Kansas. Right, right, right. So he like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'm a sign. Like, I really don't know much about college, JUCO, none of yeah, this. So yeah, like, 
I'm just gonna go with the opportunity. So I'm mm -hmm. where I'm going. So once I signed that day, Ball Q, Calvin Ball Q, uh -huh. he ended up signing. Mm -hmm. And then we had another guy, Zach Bush mm -hmm. from Louisiana. He signed. So it was three of us that actually went to that school around 2010 mm -hmm. to 2012. Mm -hmm. And we got to Kansas. We had a great year, okay, great two years good. actually. Mm -hmm. One of the best two years in the school history. We won, did pretty good. And mm -hmm. then I got offers from a bunch of Division One schools, which led me to University of Houston afterwards. University of Houston. Right. Wow, it seems like you're, well, I mean, you said basically the educational part. I was going to ask you the educational background, but whatever it is, but it really seems like chasing basketball, being true to the sports got you here. True. True, yeah, true. Do you want to say something to your first coach? No, I just want to thank him, you know, for the opportunity he gave me and uh -huh. helped me get as far as I got for right now. But yeah, I just want to thank him, man. Mm -hmm. He's still coaching, so he's still doing great and just continue to win and continue to do what he's doing. Wow, that's that's some story, man. It you is. can make a movie on it. True. <laughs> we might Looks make like one. It. We I might mean, make one. Yeah, I just felt like listening to a movie storyline. Very nice. Interesting. Through our talk show, we will bring you entertaining personal talks with certain individuals. These individuals will be divided in two categories. Number one is I am Mongolian. In this category, guests will be proud Mongolians who have stories to tell to the world. Number two, is I Love Mongolia. Through these talks, we will introduce expats and non-Mongolians who are related to Mongolia one way or another. Heartfelt stories of their love affair with Mongolia, the land of blue sky. Well, now, Mongolia. We are here in Mongolia. All right, all right. <laughs> so, what happened? How did you get connected with Mongolia? Once I finished at University of Houston and graduated, mm -hmm. I had signed with an agent out in Dallas, Kim Davis, and she gave me the opportunity to come out here. She offered me the job, and I took it. Mm -hmm. My first year here, come mm -hmm. down, played for maybe four months here my first year. Mm -hmm. Did pretty good. We lost in playoffs, and then that following year they offered me a contract to come back again. So okay. just off of them giving me the opportunity for my first year, mm -hmm. out of respect, you know, come back and do it again. And then mm -hmm. we ended up winning a championship. Oh, my mm -hmm. following year. So mm -hmm. I mean, back again for my third year. See what I can do. Hopefully, win another mm -hmm. one. Okay, I want to ask about uh, Mongolia in general. When you heard about Mongolia, what do you expect? I mean, come on, you're coming, you're going to somewhere that you don't have any clue right, about, right. right? True. So what was the reality? I mean, honestly, I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, uh -huh. I just knew one thing I was coming for was to play basketball and handle mm -hmm. business. And that was the main goal and the main mm -hmm. thing. I mean, I Googled it to see how uh -huh. it was, looked uh -huh. at a few pictures, uh -huh. didn't seem like a bad place. <laughs> the only thing is the yard weather, the weather. Uh -huh. But besides the weather, everything else is good uh -huh. here. Well, your mind is very focused on the basketball, playing ball, true, huh? True, true. Playing ball. Right. Playing ball. Okay. What do you love about Mongolia? I mean, the people, my teammates, you know, mm -hmm. my coaches, mm -hmm. and you know, but that's about it. Not too much. Not? Okay. Not too much. It's not a bad place. <laughs> okay, I mean, what do you not like about Mongolia, tell me? I mean, the uh, weather. Weather is the number one thing. Weather. Besides y'all, weather is everything is good. So where you're from? The Louisiana. Louisiana, right? It's, it's a it's hot state. Hot state, right? Like hot California. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. But this cold, the, how cold does it get in Louisiana? It get maybe forties, fifties. You know, wind will blow here mm -hmm. and there, but I mean, it won't be negative like this. Like, <laughs> negative it like never, this. It would never get to the negative. <laughs> so how are you getting out of your home? Now it's a winter time. I mean, I get out in two, three pair of pants, two, uh -huh. three jackets, and <laughs> a 
a couple of scarves, a couple of, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> head, you know, stuff like that. I, I bundled okay. up, got a suit up. Aren't right. you adapting after three years? Yeah, I mean, I'm getting better with it. Yeah. I'm getting better with it. Mm -hmm. But the, the most, uh, the hardest part was the first year, right? True, true. My first year was the worst year. one, yeah, hardest one. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, to go into California was hard for me. But, I mean, true. It's, it's a hot state. Right. You sweat a lot. and Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of hard, you know, hard to adapt. But it takes a while. So, you are playing for Tinumulti. Yes, sir. Team, right? Yes, You're sir. You're a player. So, tell me about your team. I mean, it's a great team. We're mm -hmm. doing pretty good this season. I'm okay. playing with a, f a few former teammates, maybe three of them. Former teammates? Yeah, who I played what with was my your first team? year. Uh, Monaltos. Monaltos, right? Monaltos, mm -hmm. yeah. Me, Tika, Daigi, Gunner, mm -hmm. and Yao. Mm -hmm. Yao on a different team now, but that's my boy. Ah, uh, Yao is my boy. Yeah, <laughs> my boy. All right, all right. So, uh, how often do you guys play? Tell me about your training. Who's your coach? I cannot say his name, but he know who he is. He know who he, he is. Know who I, is. You don't know. I who can't he say is. his name. I, okay. I don't know. Yeah. I call him Coach. 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 <laughs> Coach. He has a long name. Right. Like, right. Like, like uh, most of the Mongolians. All right. Coach. Mm -hmm. I just call him Coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's your coach? Me, pretty good. Pretty good coach. Very intensity. Like the win. You know, great mm -hmm. coach. You know, we practice hard. We practice maybe two, three times a week. Get a lot of shots up and stuff like that. But he's a great coach. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, what's the team goal now at this moment? I mean, basically focus on every game, take it one step at a time, try to win every game we can. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody want to lose, but you yeah. know, hopefully we can win another championship and go from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were living in Mongolia for the last three years. Right. Right. It's a different culture, different people, totally different weather. True. As a person, not a basketball player, not professionally, but as a person, what have you learned in these three years? I mean, basically... What kind of development or something new happened? I mean, basically communication you? and, you know, how to get around and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, like, not too much, but... Mm -hmm. That's the main thing, communication. Like outside, when I'm not around my teammates, how to communicate with others and get around and things mm -hmm. like that. When I'm not around my teammates, how to move, mm -hmm. you know, respectful and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're playing overseas professional player, right? Basketball right. player. And you are, uh, I mean, you have a history played in Mexico as well, True. right? So what, how do you love this lifestyle? Going around countries, playing so, your passionate thing. Right. I mean, the main thing is you're playing basketball, so that's the number one thing. You're doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's the experience. You get to see a lot, do a lot. Like, you know, most people don't get to come to Mongolia. Most mm -hmm. people don't get to go to Mexico. So mm -hmm. just the experience to travel, see mm -hmm. a lot outside of that and do a lot is a great experience. Mm -hmm. Well, since you're in Mongolian basketball sector section, you know, right. basketball develop, I want to ask about from uh, your personal, personal perspective on the Mongolian basketball development. Do we have chance to go, chance to compete in Olympics or international, uh, international big, big events, big, big championships, I mean, world yeah. championships, whatever, uh -huh. in Mongolia, from your perspective? You guys have a chance. You got a few pretty good players here that can actually go to the States and play and have fun out there if they was to. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have a chance always. I mean, but you got to work and compete and, mm -hmm. you know, provide, not provide, but, you know, develop yourself to get to that stage. Like, mm -hmm. it's not going to be easy. Those guys, NBA guys, they work to get to where they is. So, I mean, you just got to stay consistent and work and you can get there regardless. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, as, a, as, as an athlete playing in a team, what... Could the team owner, right? right? Team owner, the company, could do more to support the athletes. I mean, they do a pretty good job. It's okay. not much they really need to do. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the athletes' job to take it's care the of their business. Job. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not on the coaches or the owners. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's your job to get up extra shots. Your job to do extra work. Like, the coach can only coach and tell you what mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. But if you're not working on your own to do it, then I mean. 
it's not gonna work. Like the coaches can't play for you. They can't do the things they want you to do for you. Well, you've seen you've seen so many Mongolian basketball players. You play with them. You're right. friends with them. Right. All right. Cherishing the things all the time is not so good thing. All right. Honest criticism is a help. True. True. That's, that's that's my opinion. True. What would you say if you are to criticize or give very small advice? You know, it doesn't have to be. I mean, first you to to the Mongolian athletes, what have you noticed that that is really blocking them from big? big opportunities or big chances, you know, a successful career? I mean, basically you got to communicate, communicate on and off the court. Like the main thing, communication on the court, being a better teammate, you can always be a better teammate. You always can help a teammate. Like never want to talk down on a teammate or say any negative thing. You always want to be positive to your teammate mm -hmm. to get them a better opportunity. If it's a bad shot, still tell them it's a good shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe you make the next one. But you don't want to tell them anything negative to it, it get to clicking in their mind like they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Then they might not want to play with you, which will turn them into a bad teammate. Mm -hmm. So you always want to be positive to your teammate the way they can, you know, get the right steps and mm -hmm. do the right thing on the court. Mm -hmm. How do you see your future? I mean... How, how long, more, how, uh, how many years you are staying in Mongolia more and, you know, what's your plan in the future? I mean, future-wise, I mean, I always come back to Mongolia. This will always be a place for me. As long as I got the opportunity to come here, I'll come and play whenever mm -hmm. they need me or call me, I'll come to play. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if I was to go play anywhere else and take another job opportunity, as long as my agent find me somewhere, I'm cool with it. And, you mm -hmm. know, just continue to play basketball. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what's your dream? You've got to have dreams. I mean, my this is my dream, playing basketball. Like, it don't get no better than You're that. Living like, right, You're right, living your dream. Right, right, right. As long as I can play this game wherever I go, mm -hmm. that's my dream. Like, just to have fun and play the game till I can't. Once I'm done playing, I get to coaching or mm -hmm. training and helping others play and get mm -hmm. to where I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks very much, You're Brandon. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. It's good. It's pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank and you know, hear about basketball. And but to me, I felt like your passion. You're living this. Your dream. Right? right. True. Right. After all that hustle, all that trouble you got into basketball, playing basketball really saved. Right. Saved yes, you from there. Huh? True. It did. And yeah. you're very passionate about it. And thankful for basketball. Right. And I'm happy that I talked to you. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah. All right, I wish you good luck. I right, appreciate it. And good it. health for your future deed. Yeah? Yes, sir. All right. Well, here's Mr. Brandon uh, Morris in MNB World Talk Show.